Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's video, we'll cover everything you need to know about how to use the Gen Erase tool. First, let's talk about what the Gen Erase tool is. This tool allows you to easily replace or remove unwanted elements from your images while filling in the gaps with matching textures and elements from the surrounding area. This enhances the overall composition, eliminates the distractions and helps you to create images exactly as you envision them. The Gen Erase tool is a premium generative AI tool that uses cloud access to generate replacements for the unwanted areas. To access this tool, you'll need to be a Luminar Neo subscriber or have one of the current Creative Journey passes. To learn more about accessing the tools, visit the Skylum website at skylum.com. Now moving into Luminar Neo, it's time to look at the tool itself. But before that, if you want to follow me along and try one of the sample files on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the files now. Once you have them, import them into Luminar Neo and we can start. First come first, to use the Gen Erase tool, you need to be in the catalog module and you need to have an active internet connection. When it comes to the internet speed, as the amount of data sent away is minimal, a standard internet speed is enough. Now that is out of the way, so let's select the first image and let's start with the basic example. This one will help us to understand all the different controllers we have. So let's select the image and then we can click on the Gen Erase tool, which is in the same area as the Luminar Neo extensions. So we're going to click on it now and that will open a brand new window, which most likely is going to be the home of the generative AI tools here in Luminar Neo. Now let's start with the different controllers. So we're going to navigate to the bottom of our screen where you can see the Gen Erase title and then two arrows that represent the undo and redo options. As we haven't done anything yet, they are grayed out and we can move further into the eye icon, which when you click on it, it tells you a little bit more about the tool and you can also click on learn more, which will bring you into the Luminar Neo manual. So that's the first part of the controllers. Now moving forward, we have the preview button, which allow us to see the before and after once we make some edits to the image. And we also have the option to zoom in and out on our image. The next set of controllers will be controlling our brush, which will allow us to select or deselect the areas that we want to replace or erase. So let me show you. Right now we have a brush and we can use it to select certain area. Now if we make a mistake, we can then click on deselect and again paint over the area we want to deselect. We can, of course, adjust the size of our brush and then switch back to select and again continue selecting the area we want to remove. When it comes to selecting the area you want to remove, it is always advisable to choose a slightly larger area than just the element you are trying to remove. This will help the software recognize the surrounding area of the element making it easier to replace. Once you're happy with your selection, all you need to do is to click on Erase button. But to finish off subscribing all the controllers we have, we have an additional button which allows us to reset the selection. So if I click on it now, you will see that the selection will disappear and we will be able to start selecting another area. Now, if we press the Reset Selection by mistake, we can now return to our undo redo where we can now click on this little arrow and that will bring the selected area back. Again, once we have it ready, now we're going to go ahead and click on the erase button. Now, when it comes to the speed of the replacement, it will depend on the size of the area 
or areas you have selected, the speed of your internet, and also on how busy the cloud server is. In general, the replacement can take anything between 20 to 90 seconds. Once the application generates the new area and brings the image back, we can now go ahead and check the result. It looks quite good, however, if you're not happy with it, what you can do, you can again click on Erase and try several times to replace the area until you get the result you are looking for. Now, coming back to some of the controllers we haven't used earlier, this is the time where you can click on the before and after to see the difference between where you started and where you got through erasing different elements. Again, you can use the undo and redo if you want to, and you can also reset the selection, leave this area alone and continue by selecting another areas and then again clicking on erase and this way working your way through the image. However, we will do that in a moment. So for this time being, we are done with this image. So we can go ahead and click on save in the top right corner of our screen. Once we do that, the application will generate new image, which will be saved in a new folder that is called generative creations. Now let me close this so you can see it's a new folder located inside of your folders. This is the place where all the images you have created using the generative AI tools will be stored. From here, you can take the image and move it into edit module where you can continue with the edit or you can take it from here and very easily drag and drop it into another folder in your folders structure. Before we dive into more advanced editing, I wanted to remind you that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Photo Manipulation Masterclass. This amazing course is designed to help you to unlock your creativity and boost your photo editing skills in Luminar Neo. With 15 fun and exciting projects and over 6 hours of high quality videos, you're going to love it. So if you're interested in learning more, head over to our website, cleverphotographer.com and to get the best possible price, make sure that you follow the link in the description of this video. Now, once you're ready, it's time to select the second sample file, which will help us to try more advanced edit. When it's selected, again, click on the Gen Erase button and once we enter the Gen Erase window, we can start by looking at our image. Of course, it's beautiful capture of the temple. However, we have lots of distraction, including the person in the foreground, the horses, and the little damaged entrance. So we're gonna try to fix all of that from here, maybe with a little help from other tools like Clone Tool and Erase Tool. So first come first, let's start by removing the person in the foreground. You already know what to do. We are on select and we're gonna very simply select the person, including everything like shadows or other textures around the body. Again, we are trying to include everything and a little bit of extra to make sure that the application has enough data to replace it. So let's go ahead and select everything. And once we have the selection ready, again, all we need to do is to click on our Erase button. Once the application returns the image, you can check the result. And looking at it, it looks quite good. I don't think that we need to redo it. So we can continue by removing even more elements. So now in this next step, we're going to be focusing on the people and the horses below us. But first come first, we need to remove the selection from earlier by clicking on Reset Selection. After that, we can go ahead and select all of these elements here. Don't forget that once you select any of the elements, you also want to include all the shadows and everything that has something to do with that specific element. So take your time, go ahead, select all the people and horses. And once you're ready, we're going to continue. Once you're happy with your selection, again, go ahead 
and click on the Erase button. Once the application brings back the image, of course that you can go ahead and check the before and after to see if you are happy with the result. For me, I am quite happy with the result and later on, if we need to, we can of course still use our Erase tool or Clone tool to fix any of the small details. So now we have this part fixed. So again, let's click on Reset Selection. And finally, there is a last part I want to try to fix, and that's the entrance. Looking at it, it's all damaged and cracked. So let's go ahead, try to select it and replace it. So let's make the brush a little bit bigger so it's faster. And that way we're going to just paint over these areas. And once we're ready, again, we're going to click on Erase. Once the application returns, you can see that it did a decent job. However, I would like to try and regenerate it again to see if it does even better. So to do that, once again, simply click on Erase button. Now looking at the second option, I like it much better. Let's just reset the selection so we can see it a little better. You can see that it looks much more natural and the front of the entrance looks like it belongs there. So for now, we are done erasing using the Gen Erase tool. So all we need to do now is to click on Save. Once we return into the catalog module, we can then select the image again and move it directly into the Edit module. In the edit module, we can zoom in and have a look around if there are a few more elements we can fix. So for example, the bin here, then a little bit of debris and also the cart with the horse. Now, of course, that you could take care of this with the Gen Erase tool as well. However, it's much faster to take care of this using Erase or Clone tool. Starting with the Erase tool, we can open it in our main toolbar and it works exactly the same as the Gen Erase. All we need to do is to paint over the areas we want to remove. So just like this and this. Then use the space bar to move around and select anything you want to remove on your image. Once you're happy with the selection, simply click on Erase. It only takes a few seconds and all these elements are removed. Now, finally, looking at the horse and the cart, we can remove that using Clone Tool. So let's close the Erase tool, scroll all the way down where you're going to see the Clone Tool at the bottom and open it. After that, let's use our keyboard and Command or Control Plus to zoom in. Use the space bar to move around and let's have a look what we can do here. So we're going to sample this area right here. We're going to start with that and then we're going to start to paint over it to remove the card. Now keep using Alt or Option key on your keyboard to adjust the sample areas and then very slowly and gently remove this card from your image. Now if you want, you can also remove the horse exactly the same way. Just keep sampling these areas and work your way through the image. By the way, if you want to learn how to use the clone tool, or Erase tool, we have a full tutorials for both of the tools available on our YouTube channel and I will link them in the description of this video. Now, once we finish here, let's just zoom out and have a look at the result and I think everything is looking good. So we have removed everything we needed. So now we can close the clone tool and for example, we can apply a nice vignette. So somewhere around here then add a little bit of inner light in the center of the image. After that, we can add a little bit of the fantasy feel with our mystical tool. And to finish it off, let's use one of the LUTs in our mood tool. For example, we can try something like Long Beach or maybe even Palm Spring. Well, let's go for the Long Beach. Let's select it, close the tool, and now we are finished. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminar give. 
While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.